Uh, as we uh, will be at the funeral tomorrow evening for that. So there'll be no prayer meeting here tomorrow night. Also, uh, Wednesday night, we're having our uh, 4th of July cookout here at the church. I encourage you to sign up on the, the sheet if you've not done so. And if you can make sense of the sheet, because somebody's got on there and mangled it all up. Sue signed up. She's coming three times. I guess I'm going to have to cook her three hamburgers. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I think the way they've deciphered it is if you put your name on the left side, you're saying you're coming. If you put your name on the right side of it, it's saying, hey, I'm going to bring this. So make sure that you, we'll figure it out. We'll have more than enough, I'm sure. But that's going to start at 6. I know we normally start at 7 on Wednesday night. We're going to start that at 6. And uh, just looking forward to a good time of fellowship here Wednesday night for the 4th of July. Senior Adult Ministry has an event coming up the 21st of July. Is that going to be held here, Jim? Jim, is that going to be here? It'll be here. Okay. So if you got any questions about that, see Jim. I'm sure he'll put a sign-up sheet out there somewhere for that. There you go. Fifth Sunday singing's coming up at the end of the month. Uh, if you're interested in being a part of that, make sure you see Kelsey. And uh, we're going to... We're just going to have all kind of fellowship going on this month, so it's going to be good. We might we might get to know each other before this month's over. Might find out you like each other. All right. <laughs> God's good. God's good. We want to uh, go to the Lord in prayer. We want to pray for uh, the Smith family. Betty Smith passed away uh, Friday, I believe it was. They're having her funeral tomorrow. Uh, so remember remember the, the family, if you will, that God will touch them and minister to them. Continue remember Tony Wall, who's undergoing treatments uh, for cancer. I continue to remember Kim, Sister Jeanette's daughter, uh, just urgent request that the Lord would touch her and minister to her. Uh, Sue's brother Steve and his wife Becky, continue to remember them. Continue to remember uh, Richard Lambert and also Amy as they're both uh, going through some recovery from uh, cancer surgery. They were able to get everything from Richard's surgery. They were able to get all the cancer in his bladder uh, that they removed and uh, doing well. So continue to remember him. Continue to remember Donnie Turner as he's recovered from surgery. He uh, had his colon removed this past week. Everything went well for him for that. So remember, uh, Don, if you will. Continue to remember, brother, uh, remember uh, Sister Sheila and Ronnie, that God would touch them and minister to them. Uh, most of all for Ronnie, that God would uh, just do a work in him. Sheila sent me a message, said, I got to watch the entire service, not a word. She said, God's moving. So uh, we're praying for Ronnie, God to heal him and make him whole. Pray for Sister Sheila for strength. God would touch her and minister her. Also, Odell Hester. I uh, want to continue to pray for Odell, that God would touch him as he's dealing with cancer. Uh, Jody Wade, uh, she's uh, recovering from this transplant surgery she went through. Continue to remember uh, Josh Grigg and uh, his wife Gigi, am I saying that right? Uh, continue to remember them, if you will, uh, as he's got a surgery coming up. But just continue to remember their soul, uh, that God would touch them and minister to them. Uh, Christy Griffin uh, has got an uh, appointment to wait for us in August. Who's dealing with some sickness. Pray for Libby Helms. Uh, that God will touch her. She's got a lung biopsy coming up. Continue to pray for Susan. She's recovered from this bronchitis. Uh, Nancy Baylock, uh, possibly having to face a leg amputation. Sister Voris, uh fell and dealing with a broke sternum bone in her chest and praying for her. Uh, Christy Griffin. We don't know? Okay. Uh, if you put that request for Christy Griffin, are you here? Yeah, what's going on, Christy? Okay. So she she's dealing with some physical and and uh, memory issues. Okay. All right. They they're doing some testing on Christy for lupus, MS. They're not really sure what's going on with her. So remember Christy, if you will, and then Faith Taylor, who's recovered from surgery also. <coughs> so we want to remember them. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Remember this. God will touch and move in this situation. Let's stand. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I know I say this every time. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God's faithful. I say that every time. But I... I, I don't say it just for you. I say it to remind myself because there's times where it just don't seem like he's come through fast enough. And I have to remind myself that he's faithful. 
God will always do what he said he would do. We just have to trust him and wait on him. Amen? He's a faithful God. So let's pray to Yes, ma'am. Who and Becky? They've got to put their house up for sale. Wow. Okay. All right. Remember this situation. It's one thing after another, huh? All right. Let's remember Roy Knott. I also want to continue to pray for Dr. Bell, our state overseer, and his wife, Trish. Uh, her father passed away this uh, past week, and they're having the funeral for him on uh, Tuesday. He was a minister uh, of the gospel, loved the Lord, and gone home to be with the Lord. And uh, He's doing a lot better than we are right now, but still still having to deal with the issues and, and, and leaving the behind the family and stuff. So we want to pray for uh, Dr. Bell and his wife, Trish, that God would touch them and minister them as they, they're in Cleveland. Uh, dealing with this with the family so remember them if you will let's pray together father love you so much i give you all the praise the glory and the honor for the great things that you've done the things that you're doing you're so good to us god so faithful i pray lamb of god that you would move in this service tonight god that you would draw us ever closer to you god i pray that as we go through the word tonight that you would help us to glean from that word and allow that word to speak in us life God, that we would take that word and hide it in our heart that we might not sin against you, God. I pray, Lamb of God, that you would touch every need and request. Heal and deliver and set free. Move in a powerful way, God. We're believing you for that tonight, Jesus. I pray, God, that you would help us all just to draw closer to you. And as we draw nigh to you, you'll draw nigh to us, God. I pray for Jerry and the surgery he has scheduled for Tuesday, God. I pray that you administer in that situation. Bring healing to his body, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray for Donnie. And for all these others, God, that are recovering from surgery, for Richard and for Amy, God, as they're coming through these surgeries, I pray that you would do a, 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 just a mighty work in their lives. We thank you for the miracle of, of these lives, for the request for William, God, for, that Miss Helen gave me, God. I pray that you praise you, God, as you have brought him through this and that you would continue to touch him and minister to him in the name of Jesus. Father, we surrender all these situations to you. I pray that you touch uh, this Christy Griffin, Lord, and minister her. God, they don't know, but you do. You know the very source of the issues that she's dealing with. Heal her body. Touch Becky and Steve. Minister them is not only they're having to deal with Steve under hospice care, but the cell of their home. God, let your will be done, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Father, we surrender all that we are to you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. You are faithful, God. You've always been faithful. You've always seen us through. There's no God like you, Jesus. We praise your holy name tonight. We give you all the glory and the honor for it. We ask all that we ask in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. Would you hug a neck or two? Welcome someone to the house of the Lord. We're going to jump right in here. As I kneel in the darkness in the middle of the night, I'm praying for assurance everything's going to be all right. Lord, I see another battle out in front of me. I'm afraid I won't be able and I'll go down in defeat. And he said, I walked on the water, I calmed the raging sea. I spoke to the wind, it hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you, just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven? just to die for your sin I searched until I found you I'd do it all again 
And he said, I walked on the water. I calmed the raging sea. I spoke to the wind. It hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you. I'd do it all again. He said, do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you at how far you come. And every time that you ask me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking I wouldn't see you through? If I walk on the water, I calm the raging sea. I spoke to the wind, it hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven? Just to die for your sin I searched until I found you I'd do it all again Now she's talking to her father In a house that was once a home She said, my bills are coming due, Lord Six days is not that long She hears a voice so still and low Says I've moved like this before I'll do this little thing child And I'll give you so much more And he said I walked on the water I calmed the raging sea I spoke to the wind It hushed and I gave you peace Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you would fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you. I'd do it all again. He said... Do you remember where I brought you from? (laughs) Just take a look behind you, just how far you come. And every time that you ask me, didn't I deliver you? (laughs) So why would you be thinking I wouldn't see you through? And he said, I walked on the water. I calmed the raging sea. I spoke to the wind. It hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you, I'd do it all again. And he said, I walked on the water, I calmed the raging sea. I spoke to the wind, it hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue, didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you. Just so you wouldn't fall Didn't I leave all of heaven Just to die for your sin I searched until I found you I'd do it all again Didn't I leave all of heaven Just to die for your sin I searched until I found you I'd do it all again 
Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you. I'd do it all again. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? Think about it. I searched until I found you. I do it all again. And he said, I walked on the water. I calmed the raging sea. I spoke to the wind. It hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you would fall. Did I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you. I'd do it all again. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you. I'd do it all again. If you believe he did it for you, give him praise. Praise the Lord. He's a faithful God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. We've been using the scripture as a, a theme, a topic, if you will, a series of messages. Uh, I've been talking about not just Pentecost, but Pentecostal worship and not being ashamed to worship the Lord and praise Him. And We're just going to go through a few more of those tonight, Lord willing, and see where God takes us and I, I think when we come to the house of God, we ought to be the freest we've ever felt in all our life. I think when we come to His presence, we come together and worship and we're like-minded. I think we ought to be able to magnify the name of the Lord and not worry about what people... Listen, if all, all people you should feel liberty to worship in front of, it should be these people. Amen. I, you know, I, I, I don't understand how people walk into a Pentecostal church and they want to clam up. I, I, I believe when you come into a Pentecostal church, you ought to open up and just bless the name of the Lord. Listen... There was a day, I'll tell you the truth, there was a day in my growing up and even in early ministry, when you come together on Sunday night, you was, came expecting something to happen. And things happen. I, listen, I know the Sunday morning crowd, they come because they're trying to check the box and say they did it. But the Sunday night crowd, they came because they wanted to have a move of God. They wanted to experience God's presence. They wanted to see miracles happen. Amen. And somehow or another, we got where we just kind of calm down and sit down and act like we're just trying to finish off our Sunday evening nap. But this is the moment where we ought to be able to be as, as at free and liberty as, as we've ever been to be able to come and worship God. And so I encourage you, let's, I, I, I hate to even say it this way, but let's, let's, let's strive to recapture the, that, that momentum that we used to have. Man, I, I remember services with Daystar. Where the Holy Ghost would move on me so much and I'd get so worn out from praying people out on a Sunday night, I'd have to find somewhere to lay down to catch my breath. I remember services like that. Amen. Some of you have been with me a while. You know what I'm talking about. Now we almost treat it like a, 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 a math class or something. Let me get what i got to get so I can get on back to the house. Man, to be able to say, you know what, God, I'm coming in this place with a determination to worship you. And God, I, I listen. Some of y'all might not like what I'm about to say, but I, I'd almost just push myself to do it and hope God responds, trying to get God's attention. Some people say, well, you're putting on a show there. No, I'm trying to get God's attention to let I know I'm serious about worshiping Him. I ain't going to lie to you. There's times I clap my hands. I'm not in the Spirit, but I'm clapping my hands because the Word tells me to clap my hands. There's times I say hallelujah and amen, not because I'm in the Spirit and speaking in all tongues. I just know that the Word declares I should come declaring hallelujahs and amens. So sometimes I praise in faith and watch God meet me at my level of faith and move and intervene in my life. There's times I've been so worn down and beat down and pulverized by the powers of hell that all I could do is scream out a hallelujah and just because I screamed it out in faith God came to where I was and met with me and manifested his glory and presence in my life and I felt his touch sometimes you got to push through the adversity matter of fact I'm not even going to lie to you there's people sitting here tonight you got to push through some stuff tonight 
You got some hell you're going to have to fight this week. And you need the presence of God. You don't need a cute sermon. You don't need a cute service. You don't need to come in here looking cute for the other people in the church. I would to God that we come in and our, and our hair fall down and our clothes get wrinkled and we get all a mess because we're in the presence of God. I don't fight my way through. When I sing this song, I think about all the goodness of God and what He's done for me. Where He's had to walk to to rescue me and things that He's paid my bills and helped me. Folks, I can't help but get a little bit excited. Amen. Folks, I'm tired. My body's tired. My mind's worn out. But man, I've come to the house of God tonight. To have an encounter with Jesus. To have a move of the Holy Spirit over my life. I didn't come here to play cutesy with you and play patty cake and say we did something and go to the house. No, man. I need a meeting with God. I need an outpouring of His Spirit. These young people sitting on this front row, they need to see the experience of the Holy Ghost and the power and the manifestation of His glory. Shame on us if we think that the preachers just got to come in here and act the fool and carry on and try to drum something up. No, we should come in here with one mind and one accord saying to God, Lord, I'm here. And I'm going to give you my best for these next few moments. If it wears me out and I got to go home and crawl right in the bed because I'm so worn out, man, you'd get a better night's sleep tonight than you'd ever had in your life. You go ahead and wear yourself out with praise of the Lord. Amen. Some of the best sleep I've had is after a good Holy Ghost gully washing, slobber knocking service. I, that's what I'm talking about. The kind where you're just slobbering, you don't care if you slobber, snot running out your nose and tears running down your face. You say, well, that's ugly. Well, you can call it what you want, but when somebody gets messed up in the Holy Ghost, that way it's a beautiful thing. Somebody wipe your nose, just go ahead and keep on worshiping. Amen. Seen it done. Hallelujah. Say, preacher, what you so geared up for? I'm tired, man. I'm tired of just going through the motions. I, I, listen, we, if we're just going to go through the motions, somebody get a grill and let's go ahead and cook out tonight. If we're just going to fellowship and, and entertain one another, let's just sit at a table and talk about days going by. I'd rather have a move of God tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I've been doing a series on being unashamed. Paul said, I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed. I'm an unashamed believer. I'm unashamed to, to live my life in a way that brings glory and honor to God. And that might mean me having to take, a, take, take myself and put myself to the side and say, go ahead, God, and have your way in my life. We've talked about shouting. We've talked about weeping. We've talked about, you know, clapping our hands and all those things. And tonight I want to pick up and continue to talk to you about aspects of Pentecostal worship. How that we don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to be ashamed of who we are. We don't need to be intellectuals. We don't need to be, you know, elites. We don't need to be high-class society. There was a day the Pentecostal church, they weren't the, they weren't the well-known, well-liked people in the community. There was a day that they, that they were on the other side of the tracks and nobody really wanted to go to their churches. But now we've become popular because we've took what was at one time true worship to God and we've made it entertainment and we've made it accessible to other people. But there's still a body of people that still believe that they can call on the name of the Lord and they can see God move in a powerful way. There's still a people that know what it is to live separate holy lives. There's still a people that say, you know what, I don't, have to I don't have to live this way. I don't have to fall into this mode. I don't have to get in this form of trying to draw the crowds. Listen, folks, when you get the power of the Holy Ghost moment, there'll be hungry people out there to say, you know what, I'm tired of attraction. I'm tired of going through the motion. I'm tired. And they're going to come where the power of God's moving. You let word get in this community that people are being healed and delivered and set free. People will come to the door and say, you got Jesus here. I want to see what's happening. Amen. You won't have to go through those motions. And it doesn't take great crowds. 120 people gathered in an upper room. And the power of the Holy Ghost fell. And before they knew it, they had a, a huge congregation that they had opportunity to minister to within the same day. And 3,000 of those gave their heart to the Lord. Amen. It, it doesn't take mass numbers. It just takes people that are hungry. That will say, Lord, I'm going to seek you. And I'm going to seek you unashamedly. I'm not going to go through the motions. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to give you everything I got. And boy, what a one we're going to start with first tonight, because it's going to challenge some of you. Because some of you like to be still, and you don't like to move. But that's all right. I understand. If I move something, it might break. I understand. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I reached down to pick something up off the ground before I came to church. I twisted something in my back. My back's sore right now, but it's all right. Let let the Lord touch me, and I'll be all right. 
God's good. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we love you so much. Thank you again for the opportunity to come into your house. I pray, God, that as we go through these scriptures tonight, Lord, that you would help us all to understand deeply, fuller, wider, God, what it is that you're calling us to. God, not, not so much as what we do in the world. God, what we do in the world is very simple. We're to evangelize. We're to be sought. We're to be liked. But God, when we come to this place, this place is a house of freedom. This place is a house of liberty. It's a place where we don't have to worry about what somebody may or may not say. As a matter of fact, God, all it would take is somebody in here getting their heart and mind that they're going to push in and press forward and just receive from you. It could very well be the catalyst of what we want to experience and see. So, God, I'm asking you tonight. They're expecting of me, God. I, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you because that's in my heart. It's not because of my position. It's not because I get paid. It's none of that. It's, it's because I love you, Jesus. I love you with all my heart, and I want to give you my very best. I don't care what people say or think about me. I'm not worried about that. I don't care what these people are sitting in this congregation. I don't care what people online might say. I don't care. I love you, Lord. I'm going to give you my best. I'm asking you tonight to help us all just to surrender our pride, surrender our ego, surrender our worries and our fears, and just unashamedly take a moment and worship you. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, and God seeketh such to worship him. God, you tell us in your word there was a day that you looked down upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand that did seek you. Help us, God, to give you our best. Help us, God, to worship you in spirit and truth. God, help us, God, to give you everything. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Before you're seated, would you lift your hands and just praise Him for just a moment? Come on, give Him praise. Come on, somebody open your mouth and praise Him out loud. Come on. Don't worry about offending somebody right now. Just open your mouth and praise the name of the Lord. Let her know how good He's been to you. Come on. I will open my mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Come on, go ahead and worship Him just a moment. It's all right. Praise is comely in the house of God. Praise is comely in the house of God. We magnify your holy name, Jesus. God, you've been so good to us. You've been so good to us, Lord. You've been so good to us, God. We praise your holy name, God. I'm in my right mind because of you. God, my needs are met because of you. You're my God that supplies all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord. My body's healed because of you, Lord. My soul is saved because of you, Lord. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I can rejoice in that. I don't have to take heart in the fact that devils are subject to me or sicknesses are healed. But, God, I can take heart because my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I rejoice in that tonight, Jesus. Praise your holy name, God. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Bless your name. Come on, one more time. Clap your hands, all you people. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Clap your hands, all you people. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You can be seated if you can. If you can't, you're not going to bother me. I hope about half of you jump back up on your feet here in just a moment. Shout with me. So there's no, no other way to do it, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. We talked about shouting. We talked about weeping. Those are the couple of first couple of things that we talked about. But the third one that I want to bring up to you is dancing in the Lord. Dancing before the Lord. The scripture that talks about the dancing that we, we we're to dance before the Lord, it's, it's actually defined as a round dance, a circle, a twist, a whirl in a circular or a spiral manner, or actually to writhe. To writhe literally means to, to, to buck or, and care. I'm not trying to make fun of it, but you see people sometimes, the Holy Ghost gets on them, they start bucking and their head going around. I remember growing up as a child, I had old Sister Cook used to sit right in front of us. Can't remember Sister Cook? She'd sit right in front of us. Boy, she'd wear that hair way up tall. But when the Holy Ghost get on her and she start to whip that head around like this, every bobby pin in her hair popped out and popped that brick wall on the inside of the Dillon Church of God. And all of a sudden, you'd hear her hair begin to whoop, 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 and she was just a shout and carried on. This woman, she was about this tall, what I remember because I was probably about this short, but she felt like she was about this tall, and her hair was that much taller. But she'd begin to shout, man, and she'd all of a sudden she'd begin to writhe and carry on and circle her head around, and her hair began to pop. Some of you grew up in Pentecost. You know what I'm talking about. You remember those days when God would get to moving. And I, I, as a young man, I just remember my mama sliding me up under the pew and saying, son, you just lay down there. We're going to have a time of the Lord for a little while. And they'd go off shouting, man. Sometimes they'd shout at 11, 12 o'clock at night. Sometimes at 1 o'clock in the morning. You know what? I didn't get tired for school the next day. 
They weren't worried about getting me home to get me to my homework. What they knew that this boy needs, this boy needs an experience in the presence of God. It ain't it, it about, you know, trying to uh, accommodate this or accommodate that. But get, give me a move of God's spirit, God's power, God's presence, man. And that's all I really need. It'll give you strength in your weakness. It'll help you be emboldened. But the Bible said that, that there were those that danced before the Lord. In Psalm 149, verse 3, the Bible said, Let them praise His name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto Him with the timbrel and the harp. What was He saying here? He said, if we're going to worship God, dance in the Spirit. Dance in before the God. Give God your very best. Let your feet get to moving a little bit. Some people would say, you know what? I don't want to get in the flesh. You're already in the flesh. You're already in the flesh. See, when your heart's pure before God, and you go and praise Him, there's nothing wrong with that. Why? Because you're giving him praise. Now listen, I've seen people that danced and moved and carried on and they did it and they looked around to see who was watching them because they were trying to entertain. It's not about that, friend. Let me tell you something. When you get to thinking about the goodness of God, I can't help it but my feet want to move. When I get to thinking about where God's brought me from, I can't help it my hands get to waving around. When I get to thinking about how God saved me from my sin, I can't help it but I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, my hips get to moving a little bit. Why? Because I think about the goodness of God and where he's brought me from. Listen, I'm not up here trying to do some honky tonk dance. I just feel the move of the Spirit in my life and I can't help to be, I can't stay still. Why? Because God's brought me from a long way. And the Scripture said, if you're going to praise Him, praise Him with the dance. Sing praises to Him with the temple and the harp. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 154, 150 verse 4, He said, praise Him with the temple and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Listen, I, don't, I, I know I got one around here somewhere. I, I, I'm going to use this little thing of Debbie's back here. I know, I know it ain't it ain't the tambourine. But 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 I, I think about when, when, when Moses came to the Red Sea and, and the Bible said when they got to the Red Sea and God opened up the sea and they walked across on dry ground. That when they got to the other side and, and all of a sudden the water walls of water fell down on that Egyptian army and collapsed them. Old Miriam grabbed her a timbrel, a tambourine, if you will. And the Bible said that she began to sing her song and dance before the Lord. Why? Because she knew that God had brought her through. You say, Preacher, you know what? I don't have any beat and I don't have I don't have any rhythm. It's not about beating rhythm, it's about a song this in your heart and you begin to praise the name of the Lord and dance your dance before God with all your might you begin to praise him because you know that God's brought you through begin to praise him because God's kept you another week listen I said it this morning and I say it again if the devil had his way he'd have killed you this week but you're here because God protected you're here this week because God kept you you're here this week because God watched over you and you can dance your dance and sing your song before the Lord one of my favorite verses, favorite stories is King David. He was an elite man. He was in great position, been placed there by God, come up with a hard life and really kind of rejected and ostracized. When, when the prophet Samuel came to anoint one of Jesse's sons, they didn't even think to call him out. Jesse had it in his mind, all the kids, and he said, surely one of these is going to be my boys. My boy's going to be king. Left David out there in the field. Samuel got to the end of the line. And the Bible said that the oil would not run. And he said, have you got any more sons? He said, well, there's the, the run out there. David, he's out there. And he called for him. The anointing, the oil began to run over David. And God was anointing him to be king. When everybody else forsook and forgot David. David out there in those fields singing his songs, blessing the name of the Lord, watching God's hand move upon him mightily when lions came and bears came. God moved on him in a mighty way. But yet now he had gotten esteemed and moved up into, into the rank to the point that now he's sitting on the throne of Israel as king of Israel. He's sitting on that throne. And it would have been very easy for him to say, get an elitist kind of mindset. Get him a mindset that I'm beyond it. I don't have to act like this. God's, I've arrived, if you will. I've, I've made it. I've made it to the big time now. But the Bible said that the Ark of the Covenant had been taken away and the, the enemy had stolen it and they were bringing it back to the house of God. They were bringing it back to the place of God. And look what it says in 2 Samuel 6 verse 14. The Bible says this, that David danced before the Lord with all his might and David was wearing a linen ephod. You know what it's saying? When David saw the presence of God, the Ark Covenant, the Bible said that he took off his kingly robe because he realized there's only one king and he's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. Listen, he took off all those things that I did 
identified him to the people. He said, I'm going to get in line and I'm going to put on a linen ephod and I'm going to align myself with what God sees me as. I'm a servant of his. I belong to him. And the Bible said that when he danced, he danced with all his might. Everything that was within him, he gave God the best praise. You know the rest of the story. He goes back up to his room. His wife, Michael, looks at him and says, you're making play before the girls. Well, how silly are you to act like that? And I like David's response. You didn't like that? I want to remind you, you didn't give me this kingdom. Your daddy Saul didn't give me this kingdom. God's the one that put me here and placed me here. David said, you thought that was wrong and undignified? He said, I can act even more undignified than that. I shared this story this morning with the lady that told me I shouldn't dance around when I'm directing the choir. In my mind, I was thinking of David. I said, she thought I was undignified then. I can act even more undignified than that. Listen, friend, I'm telling you, I'll wear myself out praising the Lord because God wore himself out all the way to the cross of Calvary to save my soul. So if I get tired, I got to push a little bit more. If I get worn down, I got to push a little bit more because I I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I want everything God's got for me. And if I got to dance, I'll dance. If I got to shout, I'll shout. If I got to clap, I'll clap. Whatever I got to do, I'll give God my best. David praised him. And there's a danger. There's a danger when you look down on those that praise God. When I was in college, I could, I, listen, I went to a Bible college. I graduated from that Bible college. It was a Pentecostal school. And I never saw more elitist in all my life of people that felt, felt it was their job to prejudge how other people worship God. People would go into a chapel service and God would be moving and people would begin to praise God. And you'd hear the murmurs and the complainers in the background. Oh, they're in the flesh. I want to go over and kick them and say, hey, that feel good? You're in the flesh too. We're in the flesh, folks. Their, their, their statement of saying we're in the flesh is saying that the Spirit's not moving. The Holy Ghost had not yet been given, but David danced before the Lord. Come on now. The Spirit moved upon people. The Spirit moved upon Elijah, and he outran a chariot. Come on now. The Spirit, listen, the Spirit moved on people. The Spirit would move upon Samuel, and he would prophesy. The Spirit moved on Saul as a heathen, he prophesied. Come on now. So, so these people, they surrendered to the move of the Spirit of God. See, but what you got to understand is, I don't have to wait for God to move. God's already told me what I need to do. I don't have to come in here and say, well, God, as soon as you give me a chill bump up my neck, I'll shout hallelujah. I ought to shout hallelujah because I ain't felt the chill bump, so I could feel the chill bump. Because it's obedience to his word. But there's a, there's, a, there's a danger. There's a real danger of despising or looking down upon somebody else's religious manifestation or somebody else's uh, act of worship. When you look down on that, God might well judge you. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 15 and 29, it came to pass as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the city of David that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looking out a window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. She despised David, not David as a man, but David as a worshiper. She despised him in her heart. And look what the scripture says happened to her, 2 Samuel 6.23. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children till the day of her death. God judged her because she decided to question the worship of David. But God said about David... He's upright of heart. There's nobody, listen, there's nobody like him. He's a man after my heart. What was David? Listen, David was a king. David was a shepherd. David, David was a fighter. David was victorious. He was a warrior. But yet in all that, God said, he's after my heart. And I don't believe it's because he was willing to stand in front of Goliath. I don't believe it was willing because he was willing to go and serve Saul and play the heart for him. I believe it was because on that, on that shepherd's field out there, that when David was all by himself and nobody would recognize him, he still had a relationship with God. Even when David failed and he failed with Bathsheba, David crawled into the presence of God under conviction and he cried out to God for, in repentance and God found his heart. Listen, he said, I'm, he's a man, he's after me. 
He's not after stuff. He's not after things. His worship is not to be seen. His worship is not about people recognizing him. But his worship is unto me because he loves me. God, raise us up like David to be people that have just come after you. And quit worrying about elitists and worrying about society. Quit worrying about stuff and quit worrying about what other people might say. But that we would give you our very best. Help us not to be Michaels that would sit and question the worship of others. That we wouldn't sit and question and doubt and despise what's happening to others. We had a situation, I'm not trying to bring up old stuff in the past and in general, but we had a situation in the past where we had someone that loved to worship the Lord and would come forward and worship the Lord and somebody made the comment about her worship. Man, that got all over me. Got all over me. I'm sitting there, how dare you? Don't, don't you ever question somebody's worship. Some people would have enough to say, well, I, you know, She's that or he's that or, you, you know, they don't, they're not worth, listen, none of us are worthy to worship God. None of, it, none of us are worthy to come into his presence. But because of his blood, because of his shed blood, because of his sanctifying power, I have the opportunity to come into, boldly into the presence of God and worship him. Everybody ought to worship the Lord. So we dance before the Lord. The next thing I want to talk to you is about we lift up our hands. Everybody, See, everybody can do this one. It, it, this is easy here. If I say lift your hands and praise the Lord, everybody's all right with that. Okay, I'll lift my hands. I, I go ahead and get the dancing out of the way because some of you are like, I don't know if I'd ever dance. I pray those of you that are sitting here today, I just don't know if I'd ever dance. I pray the Holy Ghost hits you so hard you can't do nothing but dance. I pray he shake you every which way but loose. Come on now. Lord, you know I would, but I just get embarrassed. You wouldn't care if the Holy Ghost got a hold of you. Come on now. I'll move on. Lifting hands. The scripture says in Psalm 28, verse 2, Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto you, when I lift up my hands towards your holy sanctuary. God, when, I, when I'm lifting up my hands and surrender, when I'm saying to you, God, I, I, I'm yours. It's just like the song that Reggie T.R. had this morning. My heart, God, everything that I am, my heart's yours. God, I give everything that I am, I give it to you. I'm lifting my hands and surrender. In Psalm 63, verse 4, he said, Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. It's all right to lift up your hands. In Psalm 134, verse 2, he said, Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Now, I want you to notice something about this verse. It's not a question mark. It's not an ellipsis that, you know, leads it to your interpretation. For those of you who don't know what an ellipsis is, it's those three dots that sometimes come to just kind of like a continued thought. It's an absolute statement. It's an emphatic statement without any contradiction. We're to lift up our hands in the sanctuary, and we're to bless the Lord. Matter of fact, David took it to another level. He said, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So David said, I'm going to lift my hands in the sanctuary of God, and I'm going to bless the Lord. Listen, folks, it's, it's saying to God, here I am, God. Sometimes you lift your hand to get somebody's attention. Am I right? Sometimes you're in a crowd, and you're trying to you start waving. I remember when Christian graduated from college and, 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 and she was in the big old ovens auditorium and huge place and here come little old Christian down the aisle and, and me and her mama and Kelsey, we was all standing there trying to wave and get her attention. We, we, we lifted our hands and we weren't worried about what somebody else Listen, that was our daughter down there. We were, we were trying to get her attention. I'm not worried about what somebody else said. Look at those crazy people waving their hands. I didn't care about that. Matter of fact, we took it to another level. Me and Tracy, we stand there and we said, let's try the Doris wave. Maybe she'll, maybe she'll get that. So we was waving like Doris. Y'all ain't never seen Doris wave. That's how Doris waves right there. Somebody get her a DVD. She'll get a DVD. That's right. She'll, she'll see that. She'll, preach how you talking about me. But anyway, we was lifting our hands because we was trying to get her attention. Sometimes in the house of God, I'm waving. I'm saying, hey, God, I'm right here. Hey, God, here I am. Right here. I'm right here. You know, sometimes I see somebody getting a blessing on this side. I lift my hand and say, I'm over here. Bring me some of that. Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm in. Give me some, God. There's been times, not that I've been in a situation, but I've seen other people in the situation where they've had to lift their hands to say, I give up. I surrender. When you lift your hands, it's an acknowledgement to God. God, I'm, I'm releasing the power to you. I'm not holding anything back. I'm giving you everything I've got. Now, I know sometimes we lift our hands in token praise. I know that sometimes the preacher says, lift your hands and praise the Lord. People are just like, okay, I'll go ahead and lift it because everybody else is lifting. I don't want to feel different. 
But there's some people that lift their hands and they say, I come to bless the name of the Lord. I, I don't care what people say or think or do. or It doesn't matter. I come to bless the Lord. I don't care if the people beside me praise him. I'm going to bless the Lord. I don't care if the people that play the song I want to hear. I'm going to bless the Lord. I don't care if the preacher shakes my hand. I've come to bless the Lord. I don't care if my neighbor sitting down the pew from me acknowledges me. I've come to bless the Lord. I didn't come here for this one or that one or those or these. I came to bless the Lord. I come to lift up my hands in the sanctuary and bless the name of the Lord. Listen, if you knew where I came from and what God's done in my life, you'd understand why I bless the Lord. If you know where God's delivered me from, you know why. I bless the Lord because God's brought me through. I'm telling you, friend, my God is a faithful God and I lift up His holy name and bless the name of the Lord. He said emphatically a statement. Lift your hands in the sanctuary and bless the name of the Lord. I surrender to you, God. This is, this is not my time. This is your time. I give it to you, God. This is not my service. It's your service. I give it to you, God. I will bless your name, Jesus. I'll lift my hands and I'll praise you. Now, I, I want to be very clear. This is Psalms. This is way before Pentecost. So I would not even attribute this to Pentecostal worship. I'd say this is biblical worship. Are you with me? Some people say, well, I'm a Baptist. I don't like that. Are you biblical? I'm a Methodist. I don't act like that. Are you biblical? Because this book is what I'm going to be judged against. This book is what I'm going to be weighed against. If I've obeyed this book and I've lived by the letter of this book and I haven't changed one jot or ten, I can be received by this book. I can live by this book. My life is in this book. i got to have this book. I want to abide in the words of this book that I might not sin against God. So if he says, way back in David's day, lift your hands and bless his name, then I want to lift my hands and bless his name. Somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Go ahead. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So we dance before the Lord. We lift up our hands in praise. Here's one we like in the church. We clap our hands. There's a reason we do this. When we clap our hands, it's because God's been good. I mean, it's, it's an acknowledgement. It's an applause, if you will. It's a... It, I'm going to be honest with you. Don't nobody clap their hands more in this sanctuary than Brother Stephen. Stephen, clap his hands. You can say we're having hot dogs up. You say I'm getting ready to close. He's going to clap his hands. You can say we're praying for, we praying for Sister Shikamo over there with, 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 with chiggers. I heard chiggers talking about earlier. We're going to pray for her. Come on. <laughs> Some people say, that gets on my nerves. I don't care if it gets on your nerves. I hope it does get on your nerves. That you'll start clapping louder than him so you don't hear him clapping. We clap our hands. It's an acknowledgement. It's an applause. It's an acknowledgement to God, Lord. I approve. I, I'm in line with. I'm in agreement with. I'm clapping my hands. It's to clatter. It's to slap the hands together if you didn't know what clapping was. We're the only people in humanity that beat on ourselves and call it praise. We literally are beating on ourselves and we call it praise. But that's what the scripture says. We clap our hands. Psalm verse 47 verse 1. He said, oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. It is an acknowledgement of God that, God, I am going to praise your name. I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to put my hands together. And I'm going to bless your name. We do it in the song, to the beat of the song. Sometimes we just do it in spontaneous response. Sometimes we do it because we're, we're doing it in concert together. But we're clapping our hands and we're acknowledging the presence of God. And we're saying to God, God, I, I'm in alignment with you. God, I'm coming together with you. And I'm clapping my hands and blessing your holy name. Listen, folks, you're the only ones in the animal kingdom that can do it. Amen. I don't know, gorillas might can do it, but they do pretty good with it. I ain't never seen my goats jump up and pop their paws together. I ain't, I ain't never seen them do that. Hoods, claws, hawls, whatever, I don't care. It's those things that they walk on. <laughs> my veterinarian daughter down there correcting me. It's hooves, daddy. We'll talk later, okay? All right. We'll talk about correcting daddy when he's in the pulpit. All right. 
all good. But we clap. We praise. We lift our hands. We shout. We weep. We dance. We do these things because, listen, folks, it's, it's, an, it's not just an acknowledge of submission. It's not just a, a surrender to God and saying to God, Lord, I'm, I'm going to give you everything. But, man, I get excited to want to come and praise God. I, I, there, there's an anticipation that we get to come together and we get to come together as one and one mind, one accord, and praise the name of the Lord. And, man, when God meets with us in this, and God, God moves in our lives and he says, listen, I rest upon the, the praises of my people. I, I inhabit the praises of Israel is what he said. But I'm sitting, I'm resting upon those praises. He said, preacher, how in the world can I get God done in my life? Praise him. How in the world can I get God to move in my life? Praise him. Don't beg him, just praise him. You, you ain't got to beg God, I promise you. He just wants you to praise Him. He wants you to live a life that's worshipful. He wants you to live a life that's surrendered. He wants you to live a life that's set apart, separated, consecrated for the glory of God. But you're saying to God, God, everything that's within me, I want my life to be a matter of praise. You get a bad doctor's report, bless the name of the Lord. They send you a full closure notice, praise the name of the Lord. They give you a pink slip on your job, bless His name. Why? Because the Scripture said in everything we give thanks. Go home tonight and somebody's kicked your front door in and stole everything you got. Just walk through the house and say, thank you, Jesus. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. You say, how could you praise God for something like that? Because you could have been home and they'd have killed you in the process. See, we always look at the negative, but if you look at the positive, you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, 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 it might sound a little cliche, but there's been moments that I've gotten so frustrated because I got held up in traffic or got held up in that and, and got myself three or four minutes behind. And, and I'm thinking, man, I, I could have been three or four minutes ahead and get on up the road a little bit and there was an accident. And, I, and if I'd have been on time, I could have been in the middle of the accident. And I just say, thank you, Lord. Bless them. God, heal them. Do what you need doing them. But I thank you, Lord, that you protected me. Come on now. We, we, don't, we don't acknowledge God enough for his works in our life. You know, if we'd stop sometimes and just look at our day and saw that he ordered every step, and that he protected me when I needed protection, and he kept me. Listen, there's times he kept you and didn't even let you know he kept you, but he kept you. There's been moments he's protected you, and you didn't even realize it. You were just going on in your merrily way, thinking you had your day all in order and everything was in control. But God was saying, I'm watching out for you. I got your back. I'm taking care of your front. I got you. I'm your real reward. I'm everything about I got you. I'm protecting God in your steps. I'm making your path straight. I'm doing this. I'll make you lay down in the prayer. I'll put a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I'll make you lay down in green pastures. I'll work a work in your life, and I'll show you that I'm God, and I'll protect you. You don't even know it. You're just reaping blessings. Sometimes we fail to even stop long enough to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Has he been good to you? Come on, take a moment and praise him. This is probably one that some people don't even understand when it comes to things in, in the church. It's happened to me. I've seen it happen to people that I prayed for. But when people fall in the spirit and people say, I don't understand that. God's power is so overwhelming at times. So magnified that you literally lose control of any faculty of your body. He just lays you down. I've seen him fall and hit chairs and not even wake up, come up with a, a scar on, not even a, a, a mark. I've seen him, I've seen him run in the spirit and, and, and one take off this way and one take off that way and they get ready to meet in the middle and I see one go high and one go low with their eyes closed because God was in control. I was in a revival in Kentucky. Before Tracy and I got married, I was in a revival in Kentucky and, and, and it was a smaller church and man, we probably had 150, 200 people every night come in there and they'd come to the altar and the presence of God was so strong. Listen folks, I'm not exaggerating. The presence of God was so strong when they would crest the, pr the place from the front pew into the altar area, nobody laid hands on them. The presence of God was so strong, they'd just fall out. We were literally just having to move them side to side just to make room for people to continue to come to the aisle. I, I, I'm telling you, we, we, I, I've, I've seen it. I've been in this thing all my life, but I've been in ministry for the last 25 years. Man, I've seen it where God just, just overwhelms people so strongly. 
Let me put it to you this way. I'll put it to you in natural terms. Go back there in this room, in this back corner back there, and there's a couple of transformers, and there's a big old box that's over that way. And, it, and it's got fuses in there that looks like the size of small Coke bottles. And there are about 1,600 amps of electricity going through that box in each line. Go in there and grab one of them lines and see what you do. I'll find you laying back there in the floor. And if your heart's still beating, it's because God had mercy on you. Amen. But God's power is far greater and exponentially greater than anything that room back there holds. And if God ever hits you with all his power, you're going to go down. You ain't going to be able to stand there. Amen. You say, well, I don't, I don't know about that. Is that biblical? Let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. In Numbers chapter 24, verse 4, there is him who hears the words of God, who sees the visions of the Almighty, who falls down with his eyes wide open. The King James Version said he fell in a trance, but having his eyes open. The Scripture talks about the, about the power of God moving on so strongly because he's hearing the word of God, he's seeing the visions of God, and he falls down with his eyes wide open. God's got him locked up and struck down. In Acts chapter 10, verse 10, talking about Peter, he became very hungry, wanted to eat, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. He fell into a trance. God took him to a place of vision. Listen, I don't believe people just fall in the Spirit to catch them a nap. I believe that when God takes somebody into that state or that place, he's speaking to them. He's, he's, he's getting them in a place of rest where he can pour into them. You know, if God ever takes you there, just rest in it. And let God do what God wants to do. Peter had come to this place where God was about to do this, this, this change in his life. In order for Peter to go through this change that he was about to go through, because there was uh, Greek people that were coming, he was just there to minister to the Jews, and God was about to send these Greek people in, and God had to take him to a place that he could literally change his course of thinking. He took him to this trance. He's hungry. The sheep comes down with all the unclean animals, and God speaks to him and says, Rise, kill, and he said, No, Lord, I... I've never eaten anything like this. Don't you call it unclean what I've cleansed. God brings him out of the trance and said, there's some people waiting on you downstairs. You need to go down and go with them and tell them what I told you to tell them. And that's how Peter began to open up the door to the, to the uh, Greek people. So, so, so we see this time and time again. John, on the Isle of Patmos in Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, he said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying, fear not, I'm the first and the last. So, so look what he's saying. Here's John in the presence of Jesus, in the magnitude of his power, and he falls down at his feet as a dead man. Jesus, when he was resurrected, come up out of the grave, the stone was rolled away, and when they found the soldiers, the soldiers had fallen back like dead men. When they came to get Jesus in the garden, and they said, Whom do you seek? He said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am he. They fell like dead men. Why? Because they were in the fullness of the power of God. You say, well, that's, that's crazy. I don't know about you folks, but I'd rather be in that place than any place in all the world. I'd rather be in that place where I'm under the full power of God that I don't have no control. Amen. Where I don't have a place to decide if I want to do or I don't want to do. I want God to have full control of my life, and if that means laying me down like a dead man, then lay me down like a dead man and speak into my life. Some of us sometimes need to get slain in the Spirit because we get so busy, and we just need to stop a little while and say, hey, go ahead, God, have your way. Listen, God will do that for you. In Daniel 10, verse 10, Daniel speaking, he said, Behold, a hand touched me. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and the palms of my hands. God literally picked him up. God literally set him upon his knees in the palms of his hands. God put him in a place that he was literally under the control of God. Man, that's a place I'd want to live. A man or woman might be listening to the exhortations of a preacher or, and instantly fall to the ground and lie there to all appearances lifeless for 15 minutes. Some I've seen some lay there for, for, for an hour. I've, I, listen, I was preaching a, a, a service at a little independent church in Lincoln, and we literally had a man get slain in the spirit standing up. Remember being Tracy at that little church? He was slain standing up. We, we picked him up and kind of carried him out to the car and laid him in the back seat. That's the truth. His, eye, his eyes were closed. He's just standing there like right there. The Holy Ghost had a hold of him. I mean, listen, I, you say, well, preacher, you're making this. No, I'm just telling you experiences. Literally, I, I, I've, I've seen people in, in waves. The Holy Ghost hit them in waves, and they just fall out. 
I've seen the adverse of it too. I've seen where people fall out, slide over, make room for one another, giggle and talk to one another. That ain't falling in the spirit, folks. Falling in the spirit is you don't have no control. I was up in Ohio, some nutty people up there. But anyway, anybody from Ohio? Whew, good. There's some nutty people up there. Sorry, all you watching on, online. But we was in this huge church. We had a prayer line. We was praying for some people. We was going down through there praying for people. We laid hands on them. They'd fall down. They'd fall down. And, I, and as I was walking, I looked back, and they were sliding over, making room for the next person to fall down. I thought, help them, Jesus. He, hit them harder next time, God. You know? But the Bible said that in Daniel's case, they put him on the palm of the hands and knees. And in John's case, he fell like a dead man. In the soldier's case, at the, at, the, at the resurrection and also in the garden, they fell like dead men. In, in, in Peter's case, God took him into a trance where he could give him the vision. In, 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 the, in the book of Numbers, it talks about they fall into trance, having their eyes open. So all these things, listen, all these things that we see are because God moved in such a powerful way. So we talked about dancing before the Lord. We talked about clapping our hands, lifting our hands, falling out in the spirit. Here's a very simple one. Something as simple as saying amen. In our services, we say amen. Why? Because we're coming in agreement with the word of the Lord. The scripture teaches us that at the sounding of the word of the Lord that we should say amen. Look what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 15. He said, Cursed is the one who makes a carved or molded image and an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and sets it up in secret. And all the people shall answer and say amen. What are they saying amen to? They're coming in alignment with the word of God. They're saying to God, let it be. God, let your word come to pass. It, 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 it literally means in the Hebrew to make sure, truly, to build upon, to support, to be firm, as in agreement. When you say amen, when I'm declaring the word of the Lord, you say amen. You're saying, I agree with you, Pastor, let it be. I agree with the word of the Lord, let it come to pass. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 16, he says, Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed, uh, uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you say? Now, in this particular scripture, he's, he's giving correction about the gifts of the Spirit, that there's people that are, 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 are speaking in tongues. When you don't understand what people are saying and speaking in tongues, then you don't know what to say amen to. But when somebody speaks a word of prophecy or they declare the words of God, then they know they have understanding. They can declare and come in alignment with you. Are you with me? So, so this is what he's saying here. We have to have the ability to come in agreement. So we talked about dancing. We talked about lifting. We talked about clapping. We talked about uh, falling out. We talked about saying amen. And there's sometimes that people even run in the spirit. I talked about this earlier. It means to run for whatever reason. God's been good to you. Sometimes you just take off running. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46, this is the word about Elijah, that the hand of the Lord came on Elijah, he girded up his loins, and he ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now, that might sound like a simple verse, but the problem is Elijah was on foot, and Ahab was in a chariot with horses. Big difference when God's hand comes on you, you can get to moving. Amen. I've seen some of you take off and run laps around this sanctuary. Amen. I've seen God come on you, and you just take off running. Now, in your natural, you're not going to go out there in the yard and, and jog out down the road and, for exercise. <laughs> but, but you'll take off running in the spirit. <laughs> Amen. So, so Ahab uh, was outrun by Elijah as he moved upon the spirit. Acts chapter 8, verse 30. The Bible said, as Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? So a even Philip ran in the spirit. What happened? He, he, he sees a great distance. He's left a great revival in Samaria. He goes out. <laughs> He goes out into a desert place. There's a eunuch out there that God sent him to, and he takes off running in the spirit. Why? Because God had led him there. God had sent him there. In Psalm 18, verse 29, they, uh, the prophecy comes, For by you I can run against the troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. Some of y'all that feel like you're so frail and messed up you can't do stuff, take that verse right there. God gets his hand on you. You can run through a troop, and you can jump over a wall. Well, preacher, I can jump over that little wall right there, you know. <laughs> I can do that in the spirit, praise God. I got that one down pat, you know. No. If God wanted to touch you and make you jump over a wall. Listen, that same scripture with Philip, when he was in, 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 in the... In the uh, in, 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 the, in the chariot with the, with the eunuch, the Bible said that they began to share the word of the Lord with him. He said, what's for, what's training me from being baptized? And, and he said, I just need some water. And right there in the middle of the desert, they find a pool of water. And when he takes, Philip, uh, takes the eunuch down and baptizes, when they come up, Philip is immediately caught by the Spirit of God. And he's found in his otis. He's in a completely different town. Don't tell me God can't do it. God can. 
We run in the Spirit. Some people jerk or quake in the Spirit. They, they, they tremble. Psalm 2 and 11, he says, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Job 14 and 4, he said, Who can, uh, Job 14 4, do I have that one up there? I don't think I do. Let's jump down. Acts 9 6. He says, so he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city and it will be told you what to do. He was trembling. Saul was trembling before God. This is what we do. We walk, we jump. Acts chapter 3 verse 8. The Bible said that the, 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 the man that was lame laying at gate beautiful in Acts chapter 3 verse 8. Keep going. He said he leaping up and stood and walked and entered with him into the temple. He was walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. Listen. He was rejoicing because God touched him. He was running. He was, he was walking. He was jumping. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 16, the five lords of the Philistines had seen it. They returned to Ekron the same day. Now, this was, a half, this was like a three days journey, but they ended up making it in the same day. Why? Because they were walking in the Spirit of God. God had moved on them. Luke chapter 6, verse 23, he says this. He says, Rejoice you in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. So he said, listen, rejoice, leap for joy. We praise God. Now, for those of you to say, well, I don't know if I can dance. I don't know that I can, you know, do some of this other stuff. I, I, I got hope for you, okay? Noise in general is worship. You can just make a noise. There's been times I've been so overwhelmed by the Spirit, all I could do is, whoa! God knew my heart. There's sometimes I've been so hoarse from preaching a mess, I asked somebody else to go, whoa, for me, because I couldn't do it. I can't do it. Would you do it for me? Whoa, thank you, Jesus. You know my heart, God. I'd have done it if I could. Noise in general is worship. Look what he said, Psalm 33, verse 3. It says, sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a shout of joy, or play skillfully with a loud noise. Psalm 66, verse 1, he said, make a joyful shout or a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Luke 17 and 15, the Bible said, and one of them, when he saw that he had was healed, he returned him with a loud voice. He just glorified God. With a loud noise, he glorified God. Luke 19 and 37, the Bible said, then as he was drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. For all the mighty works they had seen. Listen, they just opened up their mouth and began to make noise. If you Listen, sometimes I don't know what to say. When I don't know what to say or what to pray, the Holy Spirit with groanings and utterings that can't be understood intercedes on my behalf. There's times I come in and I, I, I can't pull together a hallelujah. So I just say, whoa! Sister Sheila whistles. That's it. Sometimes noise in general is worship. God knows the heart. Every now and then I'll have my head down standing at the pulpit and out of this ear I hear Rachel over there, Woo! Why? Because noise in general is worship and it's not out of line. It's favorable in the house of God to praise Him. Noise in general is worship. Revelation 5 verse 12. Said with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb who was, who was slain to receive power, riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. When you don't know what else to say, just say glory. When you don't know what to say, just say worthy. When you don't know what to say, just say hallelujah. When you ain't got nothing else to say, just say amen. God, I love you, Jesus. When you might not put all the words together, when you get to thinking about all he's done for you, and you can't compile it into a saying, all you got to do is say worthy, glory, hallelujah. Oh, God, I bless your name. Why? Because when you think about what God's done, you can't help but want to praise him. And listen, just make a noise if nothing else. When those Israelites walked around the walls of Jericho, the Bible said that they, they weren't uttering out just praises and stuff. They just shouted a great shout. They made noise. And when they made the noise, God, I believe with all his might and power, put his foot down on the walls of Jericho, and they fell down flat, and they went in and took up the city. Listen, they just shouted a great shout. It might not make sense to anybody else, but God understood it. There might be times that you don't know what you're having to say or how you ought to say it, but you just shout out, oh, and God knows that, oh. You might say, whoa, and God knows that, woo, but whatever you're feeling, give it to God with all your heart and watch God bless you. Watch God bless you. Watch God bless you. Here's the sad part. Here's the sad part. The failure of one generation 
can cause us to lose our distinction in worship. I went to camp meeting. Well, it was prayer conference. It's been a few years ago. Kels, if you come play something for me. This is why I was passionate at Daystar. Some of our young people went, and they were sitting on the same row with me. This is back in the day when Sam and Beth were in our youth group. This just takes tell you how far back this was. And we were in prayer in prayer conference, which is kind of like winter camp meeting. And they called out for people to begin to pray. The whole room erupted with prayer. People began to pray. and I mean, it, it, it got loud in there because they were praying that loud. And some of my young people looked at me and said, Pastor, we've never seen or heard anything like this before. We've never seen or heard anything like this before. We had a young lady came to this church and visited. And she left scared. Paula, not, not to pick on you, but this is how it happened. She came down to the altar to pray, and Paula was right here. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I, I watched her. I knew she had a different background that she wasn't used to Pentecost. And the Holy Ghost began to move on Paula. Paula began to speak with other tongues because the Spirit was giving her the utterance. And, and this young lady looked up and looked over like that. She, that was the only service she ever came to here. I ran into her later. She, she was going to another church of God. I said, I said, wait a minute, something don't make sense. You, you were talking like you were scared to death in our church. She said, I was, but that church, they don't act like y'all act. I said, what? She said, I ain't never heard anything like that in that church, and I've been there several weeks. I heard what I heard the first day. If one generation fails to continue to worship, what about these young people here? What, what kind of church are they going to have if the Lord tarries? What kind of services are they going to experience? We had a, a young lady that visited. Matter of fact, there was a friend of Sam and Bess that visited, came. She cried the whole service and cried all the way home. Brother Major Sister Rhonda told me they had to go into the, the, the house and explain to the parents what happened because she'd never experienced anything like that. She sat on the front row, which was funny back in those days. Scared out of her mind. Cried the whole service. Scared to death. Didn't know what was going on. But one thing she couldn't deny is that the presence of God was there. Folks, listen, I'm not trying to, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to get you to drum something up just to say we did it. It's an experiential thing. When, when I think about where God's brought me from and what God's done in me, I can't help but get a little bit excited. And, and I don't need to be worried about how Madison or Abby or Peyton or y'all y'all good. How these, I, I, I don't need to worry about how these kids are going to respond to my worship. I want them to see the move of God in my life as a pastor, as a minister, as a, a Christian, as a child of God. I want them to see and, have, and say, I, I know what God can do because I've seen it in my pastor. I've seen it in my mom. I've seen it in my family, my loved ones. I've seen God break them through. I've seen God do a miracle in their life. You know why I worship the way I worship? Because I've seen it put before me. And I saw the effects of true worship in the house of God. Now, I'm loud all the time when I'm at church. My sister... When the Holy Ghost gets to moving, if you ain't noticed, she gets loud. But that's the way we were raised up. When I talk about ladies like Sister Cook that would shout and dance and whip her hair around, she wasn't the only one. I've seen a man that had been shot and paralyzed down his left side begin to shout under the anointing of God and walk from the back of the church to the front of the church without his walker, and God healed him. I've seen a lady come and begin to worship God with a walker. Come to the altar because she had poor circulation from her waist down and didn't have the ability to move her legs without flanging them and carrying them on. But she came and raised her hands and began to praise God. And I watched her take a lap inside the church. And I watched her go outside the church and make a lap and come back into the altar praising God. Listen, that is the power of real worship. I've seen people raise their hands in service while I was preaching and God moving them and they take their hearing aid out because God healed them in the middle of the preaching of the word and they said I kept getting louder and louder and louder and they had to take their hearing aid out because God healed them 
I'm telling you, folks, I know God can do it. And it's all based on worship. And, and I know it's become cliche, but I don't, even want, I, I don't want you to even mistake what I'm about to say. But worship really comes down to how desperate you are. It comes down to how desperate you are. Not desperate for stuff or things, but desperate for Him. I don't have to worry about stuff or things. I don't have to get bent out of shape over stuff and things because when I'm going after Him first, all that stuff will be taken care of. The greatest example of emotion would be Jesus. Jesus was an emotional person. When he'd go in the house of God, he had such zeal for the house of God. When they were, when they were uh, doing things in God's house they shouldn't have done, he kicked over tables, took cats and nine tails, run people out. He, he whipped them and, 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 and said, listen, you've made my father's house a den of thieves, but his house is going to be a house of prayer. There was zealousness from Jesus. We talked about it a little bit this morning in John chapter 11, verse 35 through 38. We see where, where, where Jesus comes into the city of Bethany where, where, where Lazarus had been laid and he wept. Keep going, please. Verse 36, the Jews said, see how he loved him. Talking about Lazarus. And he said, some, and some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. What was going on? Yes, this man that opened blinded eyes still could raise this man up even after being dead four days. But he knew what he was doing, folks. He knew what he was doing. He didn't weep because Lazarus was dead. He wept because of their unbelief. See what they're saying? Could not this man that opened blinded eyes, could he not keep this man from dying? It wasn't about his death. It was about bringing glory to God. Many times Jesus would go and heal people and would say, say to them, this has come upon them that God might be glorified, that God might be praised. Jesus, the Bible said in John 7 and verse 28, then Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple. Some people say, you preach too loud. Jesus preached loud. I promise you they didn't fall asleep in Jesus' day. Paul, they did. He fell out of the temple, fell out the window rather, and they went and raised him up and went back to preaching until the break of day. Paul was long-winded. Jesus was a little bit excited. He cried out as he taught in the temple. Hebrews 5, 7 and 8. The Bible said, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. What is, what is, what is the writer of Hebrews saying? That he cried out with vehement cries, vehement tears. He cried out to God. Matthew 9, 36 said, When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. Jesus was an emotional person. Jesus demonstrated his emotion. Sometimes it was with weeping. Sometimes it was shouting. Sometimes it was with righteous indignation. But he demonstrated his emotion. We are created in the image of God. If Jesus is the Son of God, and God and Jesus are one, then being created in that same image, then we also are emotional beings, and we should demonstrate our emotions, in, especially in worship and adoration to God. And we shouldn't be ashamed to do it. We shouldn't be ashamed to do it. Grown men would set aside their pride and their ego long enough, they'd sit and weep in the presence of God. You'd shout and wouldn't worry about it. You know, you wouldn't worry about what people might say or think. I, I could care less to throw up my hands and surrender to God and worry about what somebody might say. I could care less if the Holy Ghost gets me and I begin to dance in the Spirit. I, I don't care what people think about me. I, I'm not going to lie to you folks. I said it at the beginning of the service. I'll say it again. There's some things I long to go back and recapture. There's some things that I want to I want to see again. There's some things I want my kids to experience. There's some things that I saw as a child that my kids have yet to see. They've been in it all their life, but there's some things I want them to see and experience as a testimony to the truth of God's Word. That what God said in His Word, He'll do, He'll do. But it's up to us. Would you stand all across the house? I know I've asked you a few times to do this, but one more time, could you just lift your hands right where you are and just begin to praise Him? Come on, praise Him.
Come on, just think of his goodness for a moment. Think of his grace. Think of his mercy. Think of his power. Think of the times that he's healed you. Think of the times that he's kept you. Think of the times he's protected you. Just worship him just a moment. Praise your holy name, God. Praise your holy name, God. Praise your holy name, God. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Praise your holy name, God. Oh, God, I worship you. God, I praise you. With hands lifted high and my mouth wide open, God, I bless your name, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Praise your holy name, God. Come on, you probably have a backlog that you need to catch up on to praise. Just worship him just a moment. God, you've been good to me. And I know I haven't praised you enough, but God, I'm going to worship you. You've been so good to me, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you in this house. Come on, worship him just a moment. God of water and sky, God of glory, power and might. You are holy. You are worthy. So I'll praise and lift you high. You're the Savior and someone like you you are so amazing and so true never would have dreamed that this could be hallelujah Lamb of God that the God hallelujah, of all of God. the earth would come on praise him in me. come on praise him you are so beautiful God I love you Jesus me. God, I love you, You're Jesus. the only God in whom I believe. Yes, Lord. And in your presence, I want to stay forever. Because when I'm with you, things get better and better. So I'll praise and lift you high, God of water. You 
praise and I lift you high. I lift you high. Praise and I lift you high. I lift you high. Praise and I lift you high. I lift you high. Praise and 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 I lift you high. your hands together and clap to the Lord, will you? Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Father, thank you. Thank you for the instruction of your word. Thank you for the promises of your word. Thank you for the conviction of your word. To live our lives as praisers, to live our lives as worshipers in everything that we do, in every act that we perform, everything that we think or act or say, God, that we do it in a way that brings worship and honor and glory to you, Jesus. Father, all that I am and all that I desire to be, I pray that it honors you. Move in our lives, Jesus. Help us to be people that live our lives unashamed, that live our lives in a way that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Father, we bless your name today, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb of God. We bless your holy name, Jesus. All that we are, all that we desire to be, God, we want it to bring you glory. We praise your holy name. Worthy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. We bless the name of Jesus. Come on, one more time. Bless His name. Whatever way you feel led to do. Praise Him. Raise your hands. Lift your hands. Clap your hands. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God's good. God's good. All the time. I hope you have a great rest of the week. I look forward to seeing you Wednesday if you can be here. If you're going to be here, please make sure you put your name on the sign-up sheet. We're going to get all the meat. There are some items on there that we're asking people to help with, buns and chips and drinks and stuff like that. Somebody bring me a good cold watermelon. Me and Paula appreciate that. Amen. Make sure it's a good one. Uh, <laughs> you don't even have to cut it up. Just bring it. I'll take care of that part. Yeah, one piece. Just... We'll cut it in half. Paul, take half. I'll take the other half. We'll praise God for it. You want to see me and Paula shout? Bring a good cold watermelon here. We'll, we'll, we'll rejoice. But uh, if you can help with that, that would be greatly appreciated, man. It's just a celebration of freedom, not just in, in Christ, but in our country. Folks, they're slowly trying to take them away from us. Well, we better celebrate them while we can. Amen. Amen. Just uh, a couple of weeks ago, 
I, I, Paula brought up my attention. I looked it up. The guy standing on the street corner preaching the gospel in Lincoln this week, uh, a couple of weeks ago, got arrested uh, for, for being on the street preaching the gospel. I can't tell you what he was doing, how he was doing it, what he was saying. I, I can't tell you all that. But uh, slowly but surely, things are eroding away, and we better, we better embrace the moments, redeem the time, because the days are evil. Amen. And uh, give God our best. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to come together Sunday, uh, Wednesday and celebrate. We're going to start at 6 o'clock. I'll, I'll send out a phone tree to remind you. And uh, if, uh, if you're going to be here, make sure that you signed up so that we've got everything that we need. We don't want to run short because that time of the evening in 4th of July might be hard to find something. So we want to try to make sure we got everything in line with that. Some of the men have already said that they're going to come and help me a little bit early to get set up and do the things like that. So ladies, I've got men that have volunteered to help me. So there you go. All right. <laughs> Paula said glory. So if you'd like to come a little early and help me, that'd be great. I'll probably be here around 5 o'clock to get set up, start cooking. But uh, we're just going to come and fellowship, have a good time. Uh, one other thing, if you haven't noticed, our Spanish group, they've moved into their new building. Uh, last Sunday was their last Sunday with us, so we thank God what he's done in their life. And I uh, want to continue to pray for them. They, they've, uh, they're in a place that we were at one time. They're, they're in a place where uh, they've got a building. They've got a place to meet. They don't, they don't have all the equipment and stuff that they need and things like that. And, and uh, the pastor told me, he said, I'm moving them in there because there's work still to be done. I want them to be in there and see the work needs to be done, and maybe they'll get to work. I said, you got that problem? He said, I got that problem. So uh, uh, sometimes you need to know. I, I, I will tell you in the next few weeks, we're going to be uh, meeting for a uh, uh, just a time of gathering as a church, as a ministry, talk about some stuff, where we're at, where we're going, what we need to do, some things that we need to take a look at, um, some things that I, I, I'd like to put in place, some things I've been praying about to put in place uh, some things that we need to, to to revisit, some things that we need to discuss. Uh, we got some things going on um, uh, that we just need to, to have a discussion about. Nothing bad, nothing wrong. Uh, God's in control, and uh, I'm just looking forward to that. I also tell you this: I'd like you to go by and take a peek in the bulletin board, in the glass enclosed bulletin board, and look at our profit loss uh, statements and the the financial statements that are in there. Uh, we've had a couple of good months this year, but all the rest of the months we've run in the negative. Thank God for the good months that we have because it's kept us above board. But I want you to take a look at that and see the expenses and, and, and what we're uh, having to send out about every month. Our expense level has come down, uh, but in, in, in some respects our giving has come down. Uh, we had a lot of giving last month because of the giving for the home for children. Uh, but that, that money came in and went out. That was nothing that we could use for general funds. So uh, just take a look at that. Uh, it, if you look at, there's two pages. The bottom page gives you month by month what our expenses were, what our, what our uh, income was, and it'll give you at the bottom, it'll tell you uh, what the profit loss was, how much we were either under or over. The top paper, if you look at it, don't worry about all the percentages and stuff that are on the side, but if you look at it, it gives you a breakdown of what came in for general funds, what came in for ties, what came in for home for children, what came for all those things. It'll show you all that stuff out there. And so uh, I encourage you to stop by and take a look at that. If you ever want a copy of that, just let me know, and I can get you a copy. It's just a matter of clicking the mouse. But I just put it out there in, in the bulletin board so people can just walk by and look and see. Uh, so um, if, you, if you ever have any questions, we, we keep try to keep it. This new program that we're using has been, really been a blessing to be able to keep all our numbers together so we know where we're at. So uh, we got all that going on. But uh, I love you guys. Appreciate you. And, uh, man, we're looking forward to a great time of fellowship Wednesday. Again, don't forget to sign up if you're going to be here. No prayer meeting tomorrow. And uh, if I don't get to see you this week, I hope you have a great fourth week, uh, fourth of July week. Celebrate freedom. I know sometimes families get together and do some things. Uh, but we're going to get together here. And if I don't get to see you this week, I look forward to seeing you next Sunday morning here at 1030 uh, for a time of worship. And uh, we're going to continue the Unashamed series, Lord willing. And uh, we're going to a different aspect and uh, see what God has to do. Amen? Amen. I love you guys. Fellowship. Shake hands. Hug necks. Don't get that backwards. Love you guys. Have a great night.